Coming up on the program, it's all about growing in containers. We're going to plant and grow a number of different vegetables in containers. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored by the following. In MyGardener.com, over 300 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, organic, flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents. In MyGardener.com. Sue Growing Supply, located in Wausau, Wisconsin, focusing on certified leaf compost, an excellent amendment for poor soil. With their new garden blend, improving soil structure in clay and sandy soil, great for creating new garden beds. Also available from Sue's, pre-filled trays and pots with professional potting soil mix or organic rice hull based potting soil mix. Bag and bulk of certified leaf compost also available. Visit Sue Growing Supply Com. Stop before you dig. Call Digger's Hotline first. Call three business days before you dig. It's the law. It's completely free and it's for your safety. Know what's below before you dig. It's your responsibility. Call Digger's Hotline or visit them at diggershotline.com. HappyLeafLED.com. Commercial grade grow light with a home gardener's affordability. No fans, no motors. Simply plug in and grow. Great for seed starting to lettuce to full grown tomatoes. All indoors. HappyLeafLED.com. Sustain Natural Fertilizer. Offering superior organic plant foods that deliver research proven results. Trusted by farmers, growers, and gardeners for 30 years. Learn more at sustain.com. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Bear. Well, it's the middle portions of June and most of our in-ground garden is already planted, but that also doesn't mean gardening is done. We can utilize a lot of containers around the garden to grow more crops. And first, we're gonna start with our 60 gallon grow bags here. Now we've got two grow bags already growing. We have beets in the center bag and we have onions in the bag next to it with some leaf lettuce that has voluntarily came up. This large grow bag, it's three foot across and 15 inches high. We only fill it about 10 inches high. That's really all the depth in which you need. These are actually designed by rootmaker.com years ago for tree root development, air pruning the tree roots, but they work very well in the edible garden. So this had radishes in it. We've pulled the radishes that uh, were ready and then the ones, uh, the days are getting longer, so they're going to seed, so we went ahead and removed them. And we're going to plant potatoes in this container. Now, this already has about six, eight, nine inches of, pot, uh, of compost in it from last year. We're not going to extract it. We can, what we can do is just add on top of this more certified leaf compost from Sue's. But another way in which we can help retain the moisture in your containers is by utilizing something that we all have plenty of in our homes, which is shredded paper. This is also good for vermicompost. The worms will eat it. I wouldn't recommend including in the grow bag here or in vermicomposting the paper that has that glossy coat on it. That's just not gonna work well. This is just regular uh, catalog paper, shredded uh, newspaper, envelopes, that type of uh, you know junk mail, that type of thing. The reason why I'm adding this, I'll add about an inch of the shredded paper, it's water retention. What happens whenever paper gets really wet, it holds on to moisture. So essentially what I'm creating here is a sandwich of like a sponge in the center. We're gonna water, it's gonna rain. This will hold moisture and break down over the grow season. But as the plants need, in this instance, potatoes, it will release the moisture and it'll hold more. And this is even more important for smaller containers. So I'm gonna go do that. Then I'm gonna dump the compost and then we're gonna plant our potatoes. So I've added a good amount of paper. It's gonna elevate the soil early on in the stage here, but it'll compress down and break down all right, good black leaf compost. Now again, we don't want to fill this level full for the main reason is as it waters, as it rains, it, you know, it'll just flush over the top. We don't want that. We want to keep this all in here. So you want a, an inch in this particular situation, inch, two inches, not a, uh, a bad level to keep it at. So next, even though this is certified leaf compost, got a great amendment, a great nutrients, I am going to add some 4-4 four, four 
464 sustained fertilizer in the hole at the time of planting on these potatoes. And this is no different than what you would do in a traditional ground garden. Uh, the only difference is here we've hilled the potatoes simply to cover the developing potatoes from sun exposure. With the, with the uh, container here, whether you have a large container or a 20 gallon grow bag, five gallon bucket, we're just going to bury the potatoes all the way about you know 75 percent in the ground and then we'll just allow them to grow naturally. We're not going to heal them because that's not going to increase the root development on the stem. That's a garden myth. It, they're going to develop under the soil and the healing process in the traditional garden is simply to continue to cover the tubers as they develop from sun exposure. So with this here we're going to uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to plant them relatively. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to intercrop with this as well. So I'm going to plant the potatoes uh, on the outside here and then in the center here I'm just going to do a row of bush beans. And this will work quite well because bush beans take four to six weeks to reach maturity and begin uh, producing pods. That's about uh, four to six weeks, let's say two months. They'll last for about two and a half months. Potatoes will take about 90 days to reach maturity and then everything's done. So I'm gonna get these, uh, get these holes ready to go and then we'll plant our potatoes. So with the potatoes behind us, they're ahead of, we planted those several weeks ago. Uh, we can plant potatoes anytime. Now the only disadvantage you have is based on your region. If you're in an area where, in this instance, the grow bag would exceed 85 degrees Fahrenheit, the potatoes will stop growing and they'll die off. The nice thing about the root maker containers is they've got this white coating which is a tempered uh, control uh, coating on it so it doesn't it absorbs some heat but it doesn't bake it like some of those traditional black grow bags do. So what we have here uh, these are some uh, potatoes we had left over from Wood Prairie Farms. I'm just going to plant them in the holes here placing them with the eyes up common sense but we get excited now these are some leftover ones we had in the grow room. Because these are small, I'm going to plant both of these in one hole just to save space because I don't know how good those are going to be. Here's another one that we saved and another one that was Wood Prairie Farms. Now this is something that a lot of people do not recommend. Uh, I don't recommend doing this unless I know that the plants was not diseased. This is a all blue potato or purple in color that I dug up that was growing in the cucumber trellis. This is from last year. So all I'm going to do, I've got the seed potato here. I'm actually just going to plant this in the ground and then we'll water it in. Before I do anything, I do have, you know, I've put them in, I do want to put a little soil on top. And then I want to put the fertilizer. The reason why I don't choose to put the fertilizer underneath is because as it waters, as it rains, the water will pull that fertilizer down. If it's already at the base, that potato, yes, will develop roots and, and grow into it, but also that will also flow and, and be pushed out of the, the container as well. Uh, much quicker than if we put it on top. Now we'll just cover it up. Some of the papers come up. That's that will be fine. And I just with the potato that we had, I'm just letting it grow naturally. Now down the center, I'm going to do some Blue Lake bush beans, and those will work quite well. And I'm going to space them a little tighter than I normally would, so about every two inches because I'm in good rich fertile soil that will be maintained by an irrigation system uh, I can plant a whole lot tighter than I would in a normal situation so potatoes intercropped with pole beans or with with bush beans in a giant grow bag potatoes work real in a grow bag and you can sift the soil and make sure you have all the tubers out when harvest comes versus sometimes we always leave some in the native soil so you can grow pole beans, you can grow a lot of vine crops in containers versus what you may have heard other people say. What we have here is an approximate 25, 20, 25 gallon black container here. And we have put in as our trellis device 
tent poles from, that we had in the shed that hasn't been used for years. Now you can construct any type of string trellis or put this next to a fence to allow the beans to grow up. And that's the advantage to having pole beans or vining crops such as cucumbers on a trellis behind me. It allows the plants to go vertical, you can pick them easier, and they don't sprout on the, on the, on the ground. If you want compact varieties of beans, go with bush beans. Pole beans work very well for us, even in a container. So I've got soil here from years past, and I've just loosened it up. There's not a whole lot that needs to be done here. I do have some certified leaf compost that I'm going to add to it, not and just top it off. But before I do that, I'm going to take some shredded paper, add as a kind of a sandwich here between the old soil and the new compost as kind of a water retention mechanism. It doesn't have to be much. It's just shredded paper. Again, you don't want to use the glossy kind. This is just regular magazine junk mail paper. I'm going to add some fertilizer. Now, beans do not necessarily need fertilizer, but because they will fix their own nitrogen in uh, their leaves, they'll have nodulars and they'll pull it from the atmosphere. But if you provide ample fertilizer or nitrogen for them, they don't necessarily have to work as hard and they'll do a little bit better when it comes to growing. And now, instead of mixing this in, I'm just going to top this with new compost. And I got a little too much in there. We'll just take some of that out. It will settle down. Okay, so there we go. Now with the planting, you can put as many stakes in here as you want. We'll probably add a few more. But what I'll do here is I'll make a ring and I'm planting just ordinary Blue Lake pole beans. Good tried and true favorite. Works very well. Uh, it takes 60 to 70 days to reach maturity, maybe 70, 80, something like that, but it'll produce until the frost kills it. Now with a container here, what I'll do is I'll space my beans first and then I'll push them in the soil. And again, I don't want to overseed, but I don't want to underseed. I'd much rather have too many plants come up and then have to thin, which I don't believe I'll need to. And that looks about right just from experience. And now I'm just going to push them in the ground. Now you can mulch this with a variety of different materials. Uh, weed seed, weed free and chemical free dry grass clippings, shredded leaves, straw, um, paper, shredded paper will work. Um, and I would wait four or five days, these would germinate, then I would go ahead and mulch around them just to make sure that they come up and not be restricted by whatever mulch I put on top. So pole beans, cucumbers, viney crops in a container, absolutely, and you can be very creative with the trellis and it'll work really, really well. We're going to plant a yacon in a 15 gallon grow bag. Now this is much smaller than what's recommended, it really needs to be a 30 or 45 gallon grow bag, but we've done it before with relatively decent success. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're just going to do one. Make a hole here, pretty simple, but in addition to, we want it to go right at about soil level. We can go just slightly deeper, not much. I do want to add a handful of shredded paper and push it down in there. That's going to act as a water retention method, uh, medium there. All right, that looks good. Also going to add a little 464 fertilizer a little, kind of work that in a little bit. Yacons are a root crop from the Andes Mountains that we grow very successfully here in zone 5A and at harvest they resemble a sweet potato like tuber that is less starchy and has a very watery, appley, wa a carrot, watermelon taste to it and a number of dishes can be made by it from dehydrating them to make yacon chips to the crock pot or even baking a yacon pie which we did this past uh, fall. Uh, with them. So 
plant them right there. And you can save the rhizomes from previous years, keep them in sand, and there's multiple videos under the tool tab on our website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, to, to tell you more about the Yacons and an article that we have wrote from personal experience. Now, once we've got that done, we want to water it in, and then we also want to mulch this because it will dry out. Now, this is going to dry out much slower than a five-gallon container, such as this one beside me, but it will dry out and we want to have these as stress-free as possible and then they will produce even better. So Yacons in a container, one of multiple things that you can grow. Thanks for joining me. Join me again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Baird and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.